So here we go for today's festivities. Putzmeister 38.5, 38 meter five section boom pump. Beautiful downtown Vancouver. Mid February, not even raining, which is amazing. So we're booming up here to the eighth level, and we got about 200 feet of two and a half inch hose inside the building. Yes, that's right, two and a half inch hose. We get uh, get lucky with our mixes around here, so we get away with using the uh, the little little baby hose, the garden hose. And when we're all done, we've got our battery powered Milwaukee air compressor and our blowout cap equipped with air gauge. Meter port. Appropriately spaced far enough from the end of the cap such that if the sponge were to get pushed back, we can still bleed the air off. Very critical. This thing here is really handy for blowing out small line. I wouldn't use it on anything. Anything bigger than three and a half inch, it just doesn't really have the volume, especially if you have a couple of leaky gaskets or clamps. Uh, but for three inch and smaller, it's really super handy. And the great thing about it is it doesn't really build volume fast enough that you could uh, reach an air pressure that's really dangerous enough to cause anything catastrophic. So that's a nice little benefit of it. Always be careful when blowing over there, obviously. So we're going to go in the building here. And this building is actually an entire city block for a huge project. So now this is just the uh, odds and ends, bits and pieces of it all. So all we're pouring today is a little bit of a little bit of curbing all the way around on this level. And then we're going to drop down a level and go over about 75 feet that way and do a uh, couple yards for a little piece of slab. So yeah, a little bit of a dirty one. We've definitely done worse. I think it's about six cubic yards total. We're going to prime out just with a bucket of bentonite. We're not going to... Uh, not gonna mess with around with any any grout today. This much lining and prime out with a five gallon pail of mixed bentonite, no problem at all. So just keep it simple. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Just another little tidbit to add on to this. What we're gonna do for priming out? He's got a. You can see down there. A short little double-ended three-inch hose, so we're gonna uh, prime out the hopper, cycle around, get it nicely mixed up and blended. So we're not trying to prime out with that rocky, typically rocky first half yard of concrete. We'll cycle around, pinch off with his air cuff. Got the air cuff on there. Just gonna swing up top here. I'm gonna throw my bent mate. Not in the reducer, but the other end of the hose there, such that I can roll the. Uh, roll the slurry back through that first hose, thus coating the entire diameter of that reducer. And then we'll hook up to it and we'll prime right out. That's how we typically do it. So anyhow, over and out. So here's a fun fact. As you can see, yes, we have the air cuff on. Tough to see from here, but he's also gonna tie wire the, uh, the hose over. Uh, reason being, from experience, no names mentioned. If, if you ever were, Roger that. If you accidentally hit your engine kill with that boom in the air, once the engine is killed, you get about five seconds, and then by default, the air pressure for that air cup will release. So, yeah, not good if you got that, uh, that pit hose 50 feet in the air over a downtown street. So. Anyhow, safety tip of the day. Never rely on just the air cup alone if you're swinging over top of structures, people, streets, whatever it is. It's fine when you're swinging from one column to the next or whatever it may be in a construction atmosphere, but otherwise always double down and use the tie wire as well. All right, so here we are all connected up. Got my bent night right here. Yeah, that safety strap's not on, but we're not hanging any of this shit, so. That is why. Throw my bent night right in that hose there. I'm gonna roll it back, coat the reducer, and away we go. This 
is it. Good times. All for amazingly yard, yard and a half of curbs. Better than mixing bags, I guess. I'm pouring down below here. A little tough to see, but what I've done is I ran a rope from that red post to about five feet down that hose to support the hose such that it doesn't bend when it's coming up on the uh, head of that form. A little tough to see, but uh, yeah, I always make sure, I always make sure to have the, the rope about five feet below the potential pinch point, take up some slack and just support it so it doesn't pull over itself. What we got down here, just a little infill, crane infill. Got a nice single-ended whip hose on because we are going to blow out all the lines into this train info when we're done. And you don't want to have a double-end hose on there for that especially, so. Okay, so what this handsome fellow here is going to do, this soft three-inch sponge, we're going to blow through the two-and-a-half-inch line. The soft bowl is straight. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Good thing you cut your hair. Compressor here, and what we'll do is we will push it the majority of the way, probably at about 30 psi of air, just enough to get it moving and keep it moving. And I'm going to chase the sponge along, and when we get two to three hoses from the end, we'll cut it back down to about 15 psi. And the target is by the time we get to the last hose, we'll cut it down to maybe five to ten, and the sponge will just fart out the end of the hose with little to no drama. We got radio communication. And uh, yeah, it's being contact. Procedure. Here we go. All right, so here we go. Low down time. There's just another look at what I was talking about. Open that hose up. Just like so. Anyhow, here we go. Okay, sit air on. Here it comes. Okay, so just enough air here to get a nice consistent flow. Let me know when you're, when you're at 30 pounds. I'm there. So this is good. What we actually had was a bit of an air leak, which we've rectified with an extra wrap of poly because this little compressor, very low capacity, will not keep up with any sort of an air leak. So. Here we go, round two. Not uncommon to have to do this. And there she goes. Back to my post. A little compressor, I mean, it's slow, but it'll, uh, it is effective. As I mentioned before, the nice thing about being slow, it's pretty difficult to put yourself in a uh, nasty situation. This is about 200 feet to 2.5 and half so it's out. It's probably going to take 10 minutes to blow it out with this little thing. But uh, it still beats green in my head and it beats happening in the back of the water afterwards. Once the sponge goes, so we just feel the hose back on the truck and basically nice and clean. Yeah. It's a bit slow, it looks as closer it gets towards the end of the run here. Pick up the Here we go, final stretch. Last 10 feet of the last hose to push up. Our air pressure between 5 and 10 psi. Here the sponge, should be non eventful. Okay, it's moving now, keep it around 5 pounds. That's it. Piece of cake. 200 feet. Empty. That's a wrap. For anybody who's curious how well blowing just the sponge through the hose cleans without doing any water or rinse afterwards, that is how they look inside. No need to rinse, just throw them back on the truck, make sure the ends are clean. That's it. We are all wrapped up here. A little. 
peek at downtown Vancouver one more time before we say goodbye. There she is. That's it. That's all, folks. Over and out. That's a wrap. Well, there we go with our 200 feet of hose stacked up on our custom hose rack. Those are going to store hoses, not 20 foot lengths anyhow. They were just pumped in from the factory. So they were also with customization. Put an aluminum tray up over top of the hydraulic tank there, and then another aluminum tray in, in below. Yeah, you can't really see it. It's in below here. Yeah. There you go. That's it. Goodbye.